the 2013 football season kicks off tonight. Part four, Lake Orion versus Oxford, and we've got it for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Good evening, everyone. Back again for a fifth year, I'm Doug Corliss, along with the former wide receiver and running back coach for the Dragons, Chris Freshing. And Chris, this series started four years ago in Lake Orion, and every year, it's been worth the price of admission. It's been a great series when they reinstituted it. Did you have to pay to get in tonight? I, you know, I didn't. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. It has been a great uh, series, and, and uh, it was a close game last year, 17-10. And you know what? A lot of uh, things on both sides of the football we're going to see tonight that, that are a little unclear. And that's what these these first games uh, allow you to do is, is kind of see who you've got, what you've got. They, they've been going for the last three weeks, uh, going against each other in practice and beating each other up uh, you know, on their own side of the football. Now it's a chance to, to open it up and kick off the season. And, and you know, a traditional Lake Orion team, I think, tonight you're going to see. Traditional Oxford team is going to see tonight. And, and uh, we're going to have a lot of people here. We're going to have a lot of fun here tonight. Talking to Coach Bell earlier in the week, and he kind of described his team as a work in progress. And while they bring back some veterans in some skilled positions, you've got a lot of new players in skilled positions as well. You do. I mean, starting with your quarterback, Connor Grant's going to start. He's, he's never taken, he's never started a, a varsity game at quarterback. So he's going to be coming in and, and, and learning uh, under center uh, tonight. You've got some new wideouts uh, that are going to come out. You don't have your Chaz Millers and 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 guys like that that, that played for for uh, the team last year. So uh, you got four guys in the offensive line that are brand new. So you got you know 20% of your offensive line is coming back. That's not a lot. So how are they going to gel together? You know, on the defensive side of the football, you've got an entire secondary that's brand new. And uh, not that Oxford necessarily throws the ball, and they're probably not going to test that secondary t tonight that much. But but the point is that you're right. It is a work in progress. That's why week one is so important. And, and you've got to get off on the right foot, especially being on the road, knowing last time you played here, all right, things didn't turn out that way. It wasn't pretty. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. For Oxford, uh, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get ground and pound. But one thing that we keep that we noticed is – Glacier Wellington returns as quarterback. It seems like he's been here forever, and he really has. He started as a freshman, but this kid's just a junior. He's a junior, and he's a, he's a quality quarterback. He knows how to manage the game. He knows how to run the game, the, run the offense very well. He's a leader on their football team. Uh, you're right. You know, two years ago when we were here, he was a freshman playing well for them, and, and you, were, you saw what happened again two years ago. So you're right. He, he manages the game well, and uh, he's going to be getting the ball to Ben Line, and they're going to run that power play, power play over and over and over again because that's what Oxford does. But the, they do it so well because they do, they've done it so often, and, uh, and that's what Lake Orion's going to have to contend with tonight. It is part four. They don't call it the war on M24, it's the roar of M24. And we'll have it for you. Stay with us. Just about ready for kickoff for the 2013 season opener, the Oxford Wildcats and the Lake Orion Dragons. This series was reinstituted in 2010, and as we mentioned in the pregame, the home team has won every game to date. Oxford is head coached by head coach Bud Raleigh. He's either in his 33rd or 35th year, depending on which publication you read. His record is 235 wins, 113 losses, and one tie. His playoff record is 19 and 16. They won a state title in 1992 and made the state finals in 1990 and 1993. Last year, the Wildcat, Wildcats went seven and four and lost to Birmingham brother Rice in the district final 38 to six. Lake Orion is coached by Chris Bell. It's hard to believe Chris, he's in his 16th season as head coach. 129 and 42 overall. That's 107 and 28 in the regular season. And we're going to pause for the national anthem.
picking up with that. Uh, Coach Bell's playoff record is 22 and 14. Lake Orion went to the state finals and lost in 2008 and won the Division I championship in 2010. Last year, the Dragons were 8 and 1 and lost to Cass Tech in the Division I semifinal. Chris, you got your keys to the game tonight. Number one, um, making sure that Lake Orion establishes their perimeter speed. You know what? We've said this year and year, it seems, uh, about the Lake Orion speed. It was guys back this year, Zach Arnold, he averaged 9.8 yards a get carry. Corey Esther, same thing last year, 9.7 yards a carry. Chris Lee, 7.8 yards a carry. They're all back this year. They combined for 17 touchdowns this year. Um, you know, establishing a new quarterback, I think that's something that, that Going into last year, Lake Orion had to do that. Going into this year, we're going to have to do that as well. Connor Grant's going to be starting, as I mentioned, his first varsity start as a quarterback. Uh, he only threw three balls all year last year, getting some some um, end of the game time last year. But uh, you know, opening on the road—that's a whole new factor for, for a new quarterback, and uh, that's going to be something that they got to contend with. Um, but I think the establishment of the run will help Connor. You know, Settled the quarterback position while be able to focus on what he needs to do and leading his team down the field. Um, number two, we, we say this every single year when we play Oxford, we're going to stop our, Oxford's power game. Um, you know, flat out, this is what Oxford has done for, for years. They run that power, they their front side you know, tackle and in tight end, they down block. Their backside guard pulls, the fullback kicks out the end, and uh, they're going to run bent line up, up the middle off tackle on their power game. Um, and they, they do it very well. So we're going to have to, as a defense, come out and stop number 42 bent line. And then, you know, I think, I think this is a factor uh, in that, you know, as I'm driving up here, my car says 92 degrees out. And yeah, it's gotten a little cooler since then, but you know what? The last couple of weeks of, of, of uh, you know, practices, practice starts, it hasn't been all that hot. It's been a warm week this week, and I think that can be a big factor. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hype, there's a lot of excitement, the, the big rival between, rivalry between Lake Orion and Oxford. Um, and now you factor in all that adrenaline and that intensity, and now you factor in a humid, hot night. Um, you know, I think that's gonna have a factor on some of the guys, especially on a smaller squad, and numbers-wise, like Oxford is, when you got guys going both ways. So I, I, let's look for that as the, as the day goes on, as the night goes on, and how that's going to affect the players that are out there tonight. Oxford's taking the field. The Dragons are coming down the, the hill from the team room that's on the east side of this field. We were here, last time we were here in Oxford, it was the inaugural game on the blue turf. So now we're back for round two of the blue turf. And the Dragons take the field. Captains this year for the Dragon, number three, Charlie Hyland. Number 12, Kyle Bell and Trent Elkins. And there was one other we saw at the coin toss, and I didn't get the number, so hopefully we'll have it by next week. We'll let you know that our broadcasting schedule here on ONTV will be right back next week on the 6th of September for football at home, the home opener against Troy Athens. A week later, we will be at home again for West Bloomfield. Next telecast will be the 11th of, the game on the 11th of October against Pontiac and that'll be homecoming. And then we will round out our schedule on the 25th of October with the OEA crossover game. Captains are re-simulating the coin toss. Uh, Connor Grant out there, he is a captain. I see Chris Lee out there as a captain. So that, I think that's about it. Trent Nelkins. They simulated, they did a coin toss earlier and Lake Orion won the toss and deferred to the second half. This is a ceremonial coin toss going on. And I really don't know who's out there. Anthony Kovic, Kyle Bell, Eric O'Rourke, Michael Vinci, and Emma Burkhardt. After members are Shelby Gilla, 
So we're just about ready to get underway, kick off the 2013 season. Our officiating crew tonight, the referee is Pete Utsma, the umpire, Dennis Olson. Tom Turzen is the head linesman, Nick Meyer, the line judge, and Dan Kellogg is the back judge. Local crew, an Oakland County crew working our opener tonight. Oxford drops back, number 27, Scott Strubenroff drops deep, along with number 31, Mitchell, Mitchell Tyler. Brad Shanzer will kick off for the Dragons. Brad changed numbers this year, too. He was number nine last year. <laughs> Referee Pete Utsma blows his whistle. Chancer approaches, and we're underway. End over end kick coming down about the 12. Picked up, bobbled, and breaks free. That's number 27, Strubenbach. And he's dropped on the 25-yard line where Oxford will take over first and 10. We've talked about it before, Chris. If you haven't got opening night jitters or something wrong with it, but usually after that first play, that first hit, you settle down and you play football. Yeah, I think that's what you kind of saw there, a short kick and... and and uh, Steubenrock, you kind of bobbled it and hit the ground and, and got it up, picked it up, and was able to get a few yards for the Wildcats. Glacier Wallington's the quarterback. And play fake comes around right end. Gain of about four. Ran out of bounds by Connor Grant, number 30, Brennan Rourke. Chris, we talked about it before. I've been around Lake Orion's program since 1985-1986, and I and you've been around not quite that 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 long, but I ne I can never remember a Lake Orion starting quarterback going both ways. No, and I, I think it's going to be a you know a factor tonight going back to, to the weather. You know, Connor's going to be playing both inside linebacker and, and quarterback, and we've got hot humidity, and, and we're going to have to see how that plays itself out. I formation. Wallington under center. Another play action fake this time around the left side. He's to the 30, and he's got a first down over the 35-yard line. Well, first couple plays, if they've come out, and, and we expected them to run power to Ben Line, and, and they, they faked that, and Wallington just kept the ball on the, on the end, and, and they've been able to secure that edge, and, and they're getting chunk plays and chunk yards for four, play, four yards in the first play. They get the first down this time, so... Nice start to the season for the Wildcats. Trent Elkins helped run him out of bounds. First and 10 from the 37. They stay in high formation, one wide out to the, wide, to the left. Ben line on the run, and he gets maybe one. Trent Elkins again in on the tackle, along with number four, Christian James. Gain of one. And that's the power play that we're going to see quite a bit tonight. Yeah, there was nothing up the middle. He broke it off to the right, and the Dragon pursued stayed right with him. Number 31, Mitchell Tiley splits to the right. I formation in the backfield. Wallington along the line. He's going to keep it around the 40 to the 45 over midfield into Dragon territory. Nice block downfield by number 44, Wes Maskell. Maskell on number four, Christian James sprung Wallington out on the perimeter for a couple extra yards. And, and you know, that was just a, a simple option flow down the line of scrimmage and, and line is trailing from behind and Wallington decides to tuck it and keep it. And, Again, a quality athlete, you're not a quality athlete playing for a program like Oxford. You know, 
if you're, if you're starting as a freshman and working all the way up, uh, he's been a nice, uh, nice find for the Wildcats. First and 10 from the Dragons 48. Line, broke a tackle, and brought down by a nice ankle tackle by number nine, Brad Chisholm. He got into the line and just cut it to his left. Nobody was there. He had some open field, and Chisholm made a good ankle tackle to bring him down. Gain of nine brings up second and one. We've been doing these games for four years now in Oxford. We've always talked about a line, you know, a, whether it was Prescott line a couple years back or now his brother Ben and and uh, you know, they, they as a family they run hard, run hard, and you've seen that so far tonight. Second and one. Stoppage in play. We have an official's timeout for something. I found something on the field. I think it was the kicking tee. Nobody went back and got the kicking tee after Shanzer kicked off. Twins to the right. I formation in the backfield. Line again, and he's bet and dropped. First hit him was number 30, Brennan Rohr. And then he just got swarmed on and pushed back. Number 12, Kyle Bell in on the play. And number 60, Josh Duncan in on the stop as well. And that's, you think they practice that this week in, in, in practice? I think they, they practice <laughs> run, run defense a lot. <laughs> I mean, you, as, I, as, as I'm watching tape of, of Oxford against Athens in their preseason scrimmage, you know, they didn't put the ball up in the, in the air a lot. And, and again, that's what we expect. And so that's what Lake Orion's obviously going to expect and, and has prepared well for. Full house backfield. Wallington on the run, cuts it upfield, and he got maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Kyle Bell came up from his safety spot along with Trent Elkins. We've called his name a lot already tonight. That was a nice job by number 34, Brandon Gashi, that in that he and, and number 24, Chris Lee, were able to string that play out and force Wallington back inside to where his help was. And that's what those ends have got to do. The, 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 the Sam and those flex linebackers have got to do a nice job of maintaining, you know, containing the outside so they can't, Wallington can't bounce it on the option keep. 8.20 left here in the first. No score. Wallington, keeper. He's going to throw. Broken up by number nine. Brad Chisholm, intended for number 31, Mitchell Tiley. Bring up second down. Yeah, that crossing route, if you look from here, that crossing route was open early, and Wallington kind of delayed and, and pumped a little bit, and, and Chisholm was able to make a nice break in the football and knock it down. But uh, if Wallington sees that, that route open, that crossing route open a little bit earlier, he completes that football. Nice play by Chisholm. Josh Duncan checks in on the defensive line for the Dragons. Back to an eye formation, Tilly split right to the left. Play fake by Wallington. He's going to throw, fake the throw, and I, we got a flag, and I think we're going to have a holding penalty against Oxford. Number 66, Richard Martin, just about mugged. Number 42, Tanner Siebel. We'll get the call from referee Pete Utsma. Holding on the offense. So it'll be 10 yards, replay, replay second down. And that, that was in deep in the offensive backfield, so that really hurt. That's about, oh mercy, that's about a 15 yard penalty for him from the spot of the foul. So that brings up a second down and, oh my goodness, 10 and, and about 26. six, about 26 to go. I can't see the scoreboard from this vantage point, so. Wallington, 
Rolling right, looking, looking. He's going to run it. Breaks two tackles and is finally tackled on the Lake Orion 45. Tanner Seabold in on the tackle. Chris Lee and a host of Dragons. That was a situation there with Wallington. The first time that Oxford's come out in three wide and Wallington being in the shotgun, it never looked like he was ever looking downfield to throw the ball. Uh, you know, it looked like it keep the whole way. Dallas Pruitt, number one, their wide receiver, a tall wide receiver. Um, all he did was work on clearing out a defender and trying to occupy two defenders. And as a result, he never looked back for the football. That makes me think that that was nothing more than a keep the entire way. Brings up third down and eight. I'm sorry, third down and 18 from the 45. Wallington in the shotgun, lying alongside of him. Dragon show blitz. Wallington throws. Incomplete. And one thing, number 42, Tanner Seabold, came out from his linebacker position and just shadowed Ben Line. He wasn't going to let Ben Line get out into the flat for anything. Had a holding penalty on the play was declined by the Dragons. So that brings up fourth and 18. And the punting unit comes on the field. Situation there where Wallington turns the corner. He's rolling out to his left. And, uh, you know, he just kind of threw it up there and threw it up there to, to big number one Pruitt. And, and uh, you know, luckily for both, you know, not only the incomplete, but a holding penalty decline. And Lake Orange going to get the football back for the first time in the 2013 season. Kyle Bell back deep for the Dragons. Number 44, Wesley Maxell will punt. Wobbly kick. Bell takes it on the 15, drops it, and Oxford recovers. Number 27, Scott Strudenroth on the fumble recovery for Oxford. I, you know, I, I, I was just about to say, I think I jinxed it, Dragons, but uh, luckily for the Dragons, they got the ball back. I, I, I think what they're calling is that he didn't have possession of the football by the time he got out of bounds, the ball hit out of bounds, so. Oh, okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yep, Dragons ball first and 10. And I think that may have been a little opening night jitters. What, was it, what were we talking about pregame about catching punts? Yeah. It's a tough thing to do. It is. <laughs> Connor Grant brings him out. Number two, Josh Bays split wide to the left. 24, Chris Lee in a slot left. And number one, Zach Green split wide right. Corey Esther comes into a slot left. Now comes in motion right. Toss back. Number five, Zach Arnold, back over the 30 to the 31. Good looking play. Esther started in the backfield, went to a slot position, so they went empty backfield, no backs in the backfield, and then did a nice job of, of doing a little reverse, coming back to Chris Lee on the backside with uh, number 72, Nick Sally, leading for him for a nice first down. No huddle by the Dragons. Double slot, empty backfield, look for the Dragons. Esther comes in motion left, gets a toss left, or toss right, up over to 30, up to the 35, up to the 36 yard line. Gain of five. Brings up second and five. 550 left here in the first quarter, no score. Again, we talked about the outset. Corey Esther, 661 carries last year, almost 600 yards, almost 10 yards a carry, uh, six touchdowns. So uh, they're going to be looking to Corey and, and, and Chris Lee and Zach Arnold for some big things this year. Lee moves up into a slot right, comes in motion left. Hand off to number 44, Matt Krause. He got maybe a half yard. Number Brings up third down and about seven. And that's also the, a place where they've got to find that, that single back back there. You, Dom Giovanazzo or uh, Matt Krause. One of those two guys is going to step up. I know they're going to be rotating and playing uh, 
throughout the season, but uh, one of those guys has got to step up. Grant back to throw, throws high, and incomplete. Intended for number one, Zach Green. Almost picked off, but it hit the turf. So that'll bring up fourth down for the Dragons. And the punt team's coming on. Number 31, Mitch Tilly back deep for Oxford. And number seven, Brad Shanzer in punt formation for the Dragons. Flags on the field. I think Zach Serzo jumped off sides a little early here. Yeah, Ox here. Oxford stunted. They made a jump, and Zach Serzo fell for it. He, he flinched. So that'll back him up five yards. Make it a fourth and nine. Look at how far back. Tilly? How far back? Yeah, there? look at how far back he's standing. Yeah, he's expecting a boom punt. <laughs> and that's that'd be great. Fourth and nine for the Dragons. Now here's another thing. Your quarterback is also your long snapper. Low snap, Shanzer, good recovery. Line drive kick. Hits on the 20, 30, goes back to the 10. And good special teams coverage by the Dragons. Drops him on the seven, number 10. Zach Serzo in on the special teams tackle. Well, that's a good job by both Serzo and Lee, those gunners, uh, making sure that they force, force Tilly back in, into the middle. And they did a nice job of corralling him. And, and you know, Tilly was back there for a reason. That Shanzer, nice punt, nice bounce, nice roll. And uh, did a nice job of flipping the field and putting Lake Orion's defense in quality position. Wildcats take over first and 10 from the eight. 434 left here in the first. I formation, two wides. Tilly splits right. Number one, Dal Dallas Pruitt splits to the left. Hand off to Ben Line. He's up to the 15. Gain of about seven. Bring up second down. We mentioned this last year that we saw Prescott Line run and we've watched Ben Line run. Ben Line seems like more of a, a straight up runner. He doesn't get that forward lean and that shoulder lean that we saw with Prescott. He's still effective. He's still a, he's still a big back back there. Second down, lines the lone setback. Oh, I'm sorry, I formation. Wallington on a handoff to the fullback. Number 32, Kyle Reason with the ball. He gets maybe two. Brings up third down and two for Oxford. Nothing fancy. Again, you, you've seen Wallington run, you've seen Line run, you've seen Reason run. And, and we've, we've seen one pass attempt. Right. Third down, two wide outs. Pruitt splits left. Tilly split right. I formation in the backfield. Reason in line behind Wallington. Line gets the carry. And he got the first down. He got he got stopped short and just got a forward lunge and took him over for the first down to the 19-yard line. I'll try to set the dragon defense for you. Kyle Bell's at safety along with number nine, Brad Chisholm. Number four, Christian James. And number 13, Jalen Wiggins, are the corners. Five-yard penalty. 
I didn't get the call, but it's a five yard penalty. What was it for? False start. False start. Peter Utsman has been a very busy man so far in this game. I mean, you talked about it. You were opening game jitters. I mean, that's, you know, you see a false start. You see a couple false starts on both sides of football. You see a couple holdings. You know, it's just part of the adrenaline of game number one. Wallington on the play fake. Little toss over the middle. To number 44, West Maskill. Brought down by number four, Christian James. And number 15, Connor Grant. Slight gain, if any. I think they're calling it no gain. And that was smelled out real quick by the Dragon defense. That's one thing Coach Bell's talked about is, is you know, it might be young in the secondary, but that defense, team defense is, has got some speed as well. Second down, Wallington in the gun. He's going to keep it up the middle. Gets through the first wave and then it's just buried. Number 30, Brennan York in there. We'll see him as they peel up. Number 50, Brad Check. Connor Grant stuck his nose in there again. To give you credit for the official on the stop, too. He got in the middle of the play right yeah. there. And, and uh, not much you can do when you're that... That official right there. Dennis Olson, the umpire, kind of got right in the middle of everything, and he just had no place to go. Brings up third down and about three for Oxford. Ball spotted on the 26-yard line. High formation, Tilly split to the right. Wallington under center, looking for some place to go, reverses his field. Still trying to get outside. He's got the first down. What a run by Glacier Walling. Yeah, they had him contained in the backside. The Dragons did. And, and, and I think it was Rourke who ultimately took a, took a poor angle. And Wallington was able to sneak to the outside. And while Rourke takes that poor angle, he cuts off his other defenders from being able to assist. And, and he was able to get to the outside. Wallington is uh, for a first down. Dallas Pruitt checks in. First down and 10 for the Wildcats from the 33 yard line. High formation in the backfield. Wallington under center. Play fake. Wallington rolls, throws. Caught by Tilly and he's got some open field. Good tackle by number four, Christian James. Until he comes across, number 31 on that, on that crossing route from the opposite side of the field. And yeah, I, you know, I don't think that Kyle Bell is in, in that bad of a position. I mean, I think it was just a good throw and a good catch. And, uh, you know, yeah, we'd like to be able to make that tackle at the, at the, at the point of the catch, but, but at the same time, you got to give credit where credit's due, I think. And, and, and uh, Wallington through, made a nice ball tag with a nice catch. About a 37-yard gain for the Wildcats. First and 10 on the Dragon 35. Number 12, Luke Champion splits wide left. Tilly's in a slot left. Eye formation in the backfield. Line with the ball going around right end. And we have a flag. Line was out of bounds about the 28-yard line. We'll check the flag. I think it's going to be right on the edge right here. I was just about to say is a heck of a block by number 44, Holden, West Maskell. And it was a hold by number 44, West Maskell. And it was, it was. And uh, they kind of called it late. On Logan Shadaya uh, was the one being held. And luckily, you know, for the Dragons, that's what happened. But uh, the front, the front side of that offensive line for the for the Wildcats did a nice job of blocking down uh, it was the fullback coming on off the edge on Shadaya that uh, got the hold and, and sprung line but uh, obviously it's being brought back we have a timeout on the field that's the end of the first quarter we've got no score 
We'll be right back. After one here in Oxford, we've got no score between the Oxford Wildcats and the Lake Orion Dragons. While we have this pause, we'll remind you that DVD copies can be purchased by calling ON TV at 248 693 3377 or 248 393 1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. That's DVD copies at 248 693 3377 or 248 393 1060. Chris, not a whole lot of surprises here in the fourth quarter. It was a ground, ground and pound, but Oxford's big gain came on that little flare pass out to the right side. Again, something you don't traditionally s expect out of them from a <laughs> throwing the ball, but you know they put the ball in the air a couple, three times by, by, by now, and, and uh, you know they've been successful on one big play. So it's uh, you know Lake Orion, or I'm sorry, Oxford is kind of dominated as far as you know, time possession here in this first quarter. They just haven't, they've had long fields in which to drive and try to score. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it, to me, it's kind of reminiscent of, of last year's game in that it was kind of a slow starting football game and ended up being that way. And just two, as of right now, evenly matched football spots. The penalties killed Oxford in the first quarter. Wallington to line and he's met, slowed down, Number 33, Shadaya or Shadaya Logan, or Logan Shadaya, met him in the backfield and line squeezed forward back to the line of scrimmage. You know, in the first quarter, Oxford ran 21 plays to Lake Orion's four. And penalties just set them back and set them back and set them back. Second and 10, no gain on the play. They stay with an eye formation in the backfield. West Maskell is the lead back. Wallington on the keeper. He's going to throw. He's got number 46, Chris Lavender, for a gain of about five. Brad Chisholm comes up from his safety spot, does a nice job of making a tackle, open field tackle. You know, Glacier Wallington does a nice job of that play action fake, does a nice job of, of selling power, going the opposite way and rolling around on the boot leg to uh, find an open man, that fullback out in the flat. Brennan Rourke did a nice job of making sure that Wallington was state contained, forcing Wallington to pass for a five yard gain. Third down and five, three wide look for Oxford. Line is the only back. Wallington rolling, he's gonna run it. He's got a first down and more down to the 25 yard line. Awful close. Awful close. Now they're going to bring the up. Now they're going to bring the chains. Yep. First down. Hey, yeah, another situation where you know I think I think their wideouts are just trying to clear out the defenders in in this and and Wallington's just looking to keep. Yeah, he's had a lot of room to run. That time they opened up the middle of the field. So first and ten from the twenty-five for Oxford. Twins left, I formation in the backfield. Line, hurdles, and is hit first by number 34, Brandon Gash. And nice attempt at hurdling by line. Gain of about three. That's one thing Lake or we've always talked about Lake Orin does a nice job of, of corralling ball carriers, getting, you know, as many hats to the football as possible. And and you've got to do that against a back like line because you you know he's he's, he's so big and strong and tall and, and he he does run upright, but yet yet um, you still need guys or multiple guys around him to bring him down. Wallington to line off the right side, breaks one tackle, 
and he is brought down, led by number 60, Josh, Josh Duncan. And number 49, Jack Luby was in there. Gain of about three. Brings up a third and, let's call it third and two and a half. Third down and three. 8.45 left here in the second quarter. No score. Double wide look. Pruitt splits wide left. Number 12, Luke Champion in a slot. Wallington to line around the right side. He got the first down. Number 42, Wes Masco, the fullback. And Logan Shadai are going at it again. They're going to be doing that all night and have been doing it all night to this point in time on that power play. And typically that play is supposed to go inside the block of the fullback. Um, line bounces it to the outside and just gets enough for the first down. Yeah, he's, he's big enough, but he's also fast enough that he can break it outside like that. A lot of big backs don't have either the foot speed or the agility to make that break, but but uh, Ben Line can do that. First, first and ten. Wallington on the keeper throws, caught. Number number twenty-five. I don't know. Oh, there he is, Matthew Chavez Moore. Got him as number twenty-three. Kyle Bell on the tackle. Second down and about five. You notice the times they put the ball in the air, they just hit the fullback out in the flat or the simple crossing route. Um, nothing vertical yet, even though they tried the one time earlier in the first half. So second down. Wallington under center, line again. Up through the middle, gets down to about the five. He will not have a first down. It'll be third and one. Number 50, Brandy Jack, and number 60, Joshua Duncan. Josh Duncan in on the stop for the Dragons. Third and about two. Third and a third and a short two. So if you're Oxford, what do you call here? Um, if I'm Oxford, I've either got Mr. Wallington running it. Uh, ben Line isn't in as we speak, so I think it's going to be a quarterback keeper. Wallington cuts it up. And he's got a first down on the one. He found a little seam off the right side and cut it up for the first down. The first down for Oxford, the first and goal from the two. Looking at Ben Line on the side sideline, no one's talking to him. I think he just wanted a breather, needed a breather. He's over talking to Coach Raleigh. So first and goal for Oxford from the one. High formation in the backfield. Number 25. Anthony Chavez Moore in for the touchdown. That was a 92-yard, 17-play drive. And I don't care what league you're in, that's impressive. Number four, Aaron Johnston is in for the extra point. Tilly is the holder. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 6.03 left here in the second quarter. Our score, Oxford 7, Lake Orion nothing. Go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our new studio. See upcoming events and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand.
ONTV working to bring Lake Orion to the world. Good drive by Oxford. And again, it was a little bit of mix of Wallington running a ball, line running a ball, and safe passes. That was that there was nothing, as you said, nothing vertical. Everything was a safe pass. That's, what, that's you know that's a, what we talked about from the outset too. He, Glacier Wallington, three years into this position, into this system, you know he, he knows how to manage a football game, and then the key is to, to make sure that he can get to the, his playmakers, your, your lines, and 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 your your fullbacks and your crossing routes out of the backfield. But he knows how to run the football. He knows how to run that option and that keep. Aaron Johnston kicking off, end over end kick, high into the end zone. Lake Orion will take possession on their own 20, first and 10. You know, and as we've said, we've watched Glacier Wallington for three years now since we opened up the blue turf in 2011. And we've, you know, he just looks like a different quarterback than what we saw two years ago. And this kid's still got, a, got another year left. Connor Grant brings him out, open up with a double wide look to the left. Chris Lee in a slot right. Matt Kraus, Corey Esther, Kraus up the middle, gets about five. He just put his head down and ran right through Ben Line. He did, number 56, Austin Jones, the left guard, was leading his way as well. So, you know, that's the fifth play Lake Orion has run. You know, and we're a quarter and a half into the football game. So Lake Orion's got to establish something uh, this this half, or I'm sorry, this this series. Second and five, Esther comes in motion. Toss by kind of a cross buck back to Chris Lee. He's got a first down out of bounds at the 33 yard line. You're right. We're, it, it, we're trying to get some air in our booth here. It's it's deadly hot in here. Yeah, simple simple little, little misdirection to Chris Lee, and you know Chris has put some 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 size on in the off season. He's up to 200 pounds right now, and he still runs as fast as as he ever has as well. And so you know that's that's a good thing about Lake Orion's offense. Traditionally, they've been quick hitting football team, and, they, and they, you never know when they're going to put points on the board. Up the middle is number 21. Dom Giovazzano for his first carry of the year, and he got a first down. I think they expect a lot out of Dom this year. Yeah, no, he had, he had a nice season last year and getting some 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 time. He, he averaged over six yards a carry, four touchdowns in 54 attempts. So he, he, he knows how to run the football well, and, and he will do a nice job for the Dragons this, this fall. First and 10. Lee in motion. Corey Esther on the misdirect, and... He gets right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. He was, he was met by number 25, Anthony Chavez Moore. So no gain, second and 10. You know what, that's number 20, that's John Patrick making the tackle there. John Patrick, 26? Correct. Okay. 25, actually. They've got two 26s on the yeah, roster. Yeah, the, the roster's a little hazy here. So second and 10. Grand under center. Drops back to pass. Throws. Just led. Just led Zach Arnold a little too far. He got open on the post, and the, the line did a nice job of protecting so well, I think that I think Connor felt he had a rush that and he didn't have to. And uh, and Zach Arnold got open. He did. And that, you know that's that speed we've talked about on the perimeter and, and, and now working on now. Even though that ball is incomplete, now you've set the tone for 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 the Wildcats. Like okay, you know what? They can go up top. They can go up top. We got to be a little bit more cognizant of that now. Arnold split wide to the left. Connor back to throw. Got Chris Lee out on the flat. He's got a first down and more down to about the 37-yard line of Oxford. 
and they kind of just borrowed a page out of Oxford's playbook. Yeah, Connor did a nice job of, of providing a good play action fake, rolling out, and, and Chris Lee's on the edge blocking and, and then releases out of the flat wide open and, uh, you know, gets a big first down for the Dragons. 4-12 left here in the second quarter. Oxford, Oxford up 7 to nothing. Number 10, Zach Zero checks in. And these are some of the things that, that, that you know, again, a first first time starting quarterback, even though he's a senior, you've got to put some plays in there that allow him to gain some confidence, and, and those plays are going to do that. Esther in motion. Handoff up the middle to Giovasano. He gets maybe a yard, and that's being, that's being liberal with it. They're calling it no gain. So that brings up third down. Oh, I'm sorry, second down. Second down and 10. Trips left. Zach Green single wide out to the right. Serzo in motion, toss back to him. Trying to cut it upfield, he does. Hurdles, he's got a first down and more down to about the 21 yard line. Good run. If you watch that play, there is just a wall of white just pushing Oxford down. There was no penetration whatsoever. And Zach did a nice job of, of, of being able to, to weave his way through there. And a nice cutback after the first down chains. Well executed play for the Dragons. First and 10 from the 22 yard line. Stoppage of play for something. Timeout. Timeout Lake Orion. Oxford. Our timeout. Well, he just signaled to Lake Orion side. That's there we go. Timeout Oxford. I tell you what, Doug. 2.55 to go in the second quarter. Pretty fast football game. It has gone by fast. And that always seems to happen when you have a lot of ground. You win the balls run on the ground a lot. The clock keeps moving. You don't throw in completions to stop the clock. Be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on ONTV. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand at www. Or orionontv.org. First and ten for the Dragons from the 22 yard line. Double wide, double slot look. Lee in motion. Serzo up Dom, Dom Giovasano up the middle. Gain of about three. Making the tackle number 41. And that's the thing you see as you see the Wildcats bring in three new defensive starter or defensive players you know the ability on a smaller squad to be able to rotate guys on a hot humid night like that is such that uh, you know one of the teams has got to take advantage of that opportunity flags we may have a motion call against the dragons you know what i think uh Cody, Cody Roop, number 51, oh. the nose guard, who they just brought in oh, in substitution oh, situation, he was a little anxious and jumped yep. in the neutral zone. Offside Oxford. So that'll be a five yard penalty. Bring up, make it second down and one. Do you take a shot here? Take a shot to score every time, don't you? <laughs> Always tell an offensive coach. Chris Lee on the carry, Get, tries to break it outside, got a first down, and he's in for a touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. You're right, take a shot, take a shot, put it on the board. Driving touchdown score by number 24, Chris Lee. And that was all his speed and his power, because he, he, he ran high, he ran with his legs high, guys couldn't grab him and wrap him up around the ankles. Number 98, Luke 
Velavacqua, and Coach Bell speaks the world out of this kid. He's a sophomore. He really likes him. Josh Bays is the holder. Kick is up, and the kick is good. We've got 2.10 left in the first half. We're tied at seven. Number 98, the 80 the yards in 10 plays. Chris Lee doing the rest of the work for the touchdown. And what I liked is he was able to keep his legs high and stay in bounds. <laughs> he had guys grabbing at him. He was able to step out of the tackles and make it into the end zone. We got a football game. I mean, we got a football game. You know, and that's what we expected coming up here. And uh, you know, now it's just it'll be a matter, Friday, matter of you know attrition as the day night goes on. It's still awful warm out here. It's very you know, and, and it's it's very humid. Those guys are uh, expending a lot of energy on both sides of the football. And now it's just a matter of of numbers and and um, not making mistakes like you know Oxford did in the first quarter. You know all those penalties you talked about. Um, they dominated that first quarter in time of possession, a number of plays, but yet they kicked themselves in the foot because of, of the penalties. And the second quarter has been a little cleaner. And as a result, you see points on the football on the on the scoreboard. Brad Shans are kicking off for the Dragons. End over end kick down to about the two, taken by number 27, who has a seam. Brought down by Shanzer and number 49, Jack Luby, after a 38-yard return, number 27, Scott Strudenbach. So Oxford takes over first and 10 on their own 40. That's one thing I love about high school football is that there's an opportunity for returns. You know, and, yes. and, you, know <laughs> you see the college game now, you see the NFL game now, there's not those opportunities anymore. Well, That's what makes this game exciting, too, is, is uh, those types of returns. Kickers have gotten so good that you're right. The, the kick return is something you don't see a lot of. Ben line with the carry, up for about five. Connor Grant and Tanner Siebold on the tackle. Bradley check. Number 50, Brad check in on the, play. On the tackle down. also. So that brings up second and five. We have a Dragon player bent over a little Chris bit. That's number 30, field. Brennan York. You ever wanted to make your own TV show or operate a camera for a live sporting event? Well, ON TV can make it happen. Your first step, though, is to sign up for orientation. It's free, and it offers you a look behind the scenes of ON TV. Call 248 693 3377 or 248 393 1060 for more information. While we have this break and while Brennan's down, we were talking beforehand that the, the Heads Up program to prevent concussion, that's really starting more on the youth levels now and it really hasn't worked its way up to the high school levels yet. You're right, you were in the infancy stages and part of my role as, as, a, as a director of youth football for the Detroit Lions and I'm also what they consider a master trainer for USA football. I was traveling the state and the country this, this summer teaching heads up tackling. And one of the points of emphasis is, is certainly is making sure that we're, we're focusing on the player health and safety and understanding and getting everybody from coaches to parents to players to understand what the signs and symptoms of concussions are. And uh, everyone needs to be educated on that process. So it was very uh, encouraging when I traveled the state and the country this, this summer to get these youth football organizations involved in, in the education process. And yes, we're in the infancy stages of, of this education process, but the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association has also stepped up to endorse Heads Up Football. And it, over the course of time, it's gonna funnel into the middle schools and high schools, which is an encouraging thing. Brennan York, or yeah, sure he did. Brennan York went off under his own power. Oxford I formation. Wallington on the keeper around the right side. He had a little seam. Was brought down by 
Brandon Gash, number 34, but he's got enough for a first down, first and 10 Oxford, inside Dragon territory at the 40, 44 yard line. 16 yards on the carry. Line going around the right side. And at his initial point of attack, Logan Shadia met him head on. And Line just put a hand out and threw, kind of threw him down. It's been a fun matchup to watch within the game is the fullback leading on Shadia. Oxford going hurry up. Wallington on the roll left. Contain, got pressure, contain. got stopped. He's going deep. And incomplete, good coverage downfield by number three, Charlie Highland. He had all day to throw that ball. He did, and, 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 and Coach Raleigh's yelling at Wallington right now because I think he, he felt he should have continued his path to his left. He, he turned back and looked back, and that's where some backside pressure came and forced him to, to throw that ball up for, up for grabs deep. But, you know, that, uh, the athleticism of number 10 Wallington is obviously been evident here in this first half. He's, he's done a nice job of avoiding pressure when needing to and being able to tuck the ball and run. Things we knew we were going to see coming into the game tonight. 36.9 seconds left. Dragons have, a, or the Wildcats have a third down and five from the Lake Orion 34. Wallington back to pass, throws, complete and brought down on the 30-yard line is number 46, Chris Lavender. That's enough for a first down. First and 10, Oxford. They stop the clock to reset the, the chains. 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Clock starts. Wallington, play fake. Cuts back the other way. He's got room to run. Throws in the end zone. Tilly was all alone for the touchdown. There was nobody within five yards of him. Yep. I mean, again, the athleticism of Wallington, he made everyone think he was rolling to the right, was going to throw, again, a crossing route or a, or a, a flat pass to the, the fullback, and he reverses his course, and you're right, number 31, Mike, or Tilly, was left all alone in the back corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Aaron Johnson puts it through for the point after, and with 18.3 seconds left here in the second quarter, your score, Oxford 14, Lake Orion 7. Video classes are now enrolling. Reserve your seat today. Learn the basics of studio and field production with ONTV staff of video professionals. We offer hands-on instruction in a fun atmosphere. Orion residents pay only $10. Call ONTV to find out more at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060 or visit our webpage, orionontv.org. Well, if you're Oxford, you gotta feel good, you know, just before the half going going into half with with, with a seven point lead. And, and you know, you know on, on the flip side, if you're the Dragons, you, okay, they've put the ball up in the air and, and they've done it fairly effectively, the Wildcats have. And now, you know, it's just a matter of, of again, making sure Dragons are in position to make some plays and, and uh, turn this thing back around. Number four, Johnston's kick goes in and through the end zone. And it's another thing we talked about in pregame. You've got a whole new secondary back there for the Dragons. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take game experience. You can scrimmage all you want. You can practice all you want, but you've gotta get that game experience. And they'll get better. Coach Blackstock has been around too long and you know, brought up too many guys through the ranks. So the Dragons take over first and 10 on their own 20. I think uh, Connor Grant's just gonna take a knee. 
And we the will team. end the first half in 10 seconds. Very entertaining half of football. At the end of the first half, your score, Oxford Wildcats 14, Lake Orion Dragons 7. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. We'll be back. Halftime here, the Lake, the Oxford Wildcats lead the Lake Orion Dragons 14 to 7. Chris, you've got halftime stats. Yeah, I mean, obviously the biggest stat is the 14-7 halftime score. But but if you look at the stats, the time of possession stands out to me. 17 minutes 56 seconds for Oxford, six minutes and four seconds for for Lake Orion. 12 first downs for Oxford to Lake Orion six. 128 yards on the ground for Oxford to Lake Orion 77. Here's where. I guess kind of surprised me, you know, um, Oxford 6 of 9 in the air for 86 yards. They're very effective uh, to Lake Orion's 1 of 3 for 16 yards. 214 total yards for Oxford to Lake Orion's 93. Uh, Chris Lee leads the Lake Orion uh, rushing attack with 24 yards and a touchdown. Zach Arnold's got a uh, one reception for 16 yards. Uh, on the ground for, for Oxford, Ben Lyons carried the ball 12 times for 42 yards. Glacier Wallington, 10 carries for 82 yards. Um, and then they've gone up top uh, twice to Mitchell Tilly. Uh, two receptions for 62 yards and that touchdown towards the end of the second quarter. So, um, you know, time of possession is what it is. And, and, you know, Oxford had those four big penalties in that first quarter, which had they not had those really could have made a, a, a bigger difference in that first quarter but uh, it's a close to tight fit or working ball game and you know what it's going to be a situation where it's going to be a lot of the same here in the second half yeah we brought it up that the penalties just killed oxford in the first quarter especially oxford scored first on a one yard touchdown run by anthony chavez moore lake orion came back as chris alluded to 10 play 80 yard scoring drive with a 15 yard touchdown run by Chris Lee. Oxford scored just before the half on a 30 yard touchdown pass from Glacier Wallington to Mitch Tilly. Got some gathering clouds off to our north, so we'll keep an eye on the weather as well. Lake Orion will receive the kick in the second half. And Chris, I, th I think the, what surprised me the most was that Glacier Wallington didn't just manage the game. He was he was an active participant. No, you're, you're right. That's what we talked about at the outset. Him doing just that as he's grown into his role. But uh, but you're right. He was a is a major part of that. And he's he's very elusive. He's you know five ten, 185 pounds or so. And and. Uh, he did a nice job of, of running the option. He did a nice job of rolling out and, and containing the game of the football. And obviously, he was very effective in, in, in the air, too. I don't think I've seen Lake or Oxford throw the ball nine times in a game. From the Dragon <laughs> standpoint, um, there's I, I agree with Chris Be or with Coach Bell 100%. It's a work in progress. You saw some breakdowns in the defensive backfield. That'll be fixed. And it's nothing that can't be corrected. Here's a kick, low line drive kick, bounces, taken, taken in the end zone by Chris Lee. He he was gonna try to field it at the one and step back in the end zone. So the Dragons will take over first and ten on their own twenty. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything from the Dragon side of the ball that couldn't be or isn't going to be fixed. And I'm sure Coach Tooley made some adjustments. Coach Blackstock probably got his defensive backs together, made some adjustments. We'll see how they play in the second half. Double wide, double slot look for the Dragons. Corey Esther comes in motion. Chris Lee on the misdirection. He's over the 20, about to the 23. number 12. You, you, you look at the uh, the Lake Orion stats at halftime, and you see we talked about at the outset with last year's stats with Chris Lee, Corey Esther, and uh, Zach Arnold. They're balanced again tonight. Three carries, two carries. They 
Coach Bell does a nice job of spreading it out and getting everybody active. So you can't focus, you can't isolate on one particular back. There's multiple guys that can beat you. And that's, that's what makes Lake Orion so effective. Not only their talent, but the ability to, to allow for that misdirectional, the ability to allow for other guys getting involved in the game. Here's something we didn't expect to see so early. Orion had to call a timeout. 30 seconds into the third quarter. You, you want to come out, you don't want to, you don't want to, you want to make sure early on that you, especially coming out, you're down seven, you want to make sure that you don't start by you know, having a missed personnel or wrong personnel in there or misaligned or whatever. See, so you, you make sure early on in the first half, half second half, I'm sorry, you set the tone properly and, and there's no reason that, uh, you know, calling a timeout is not the right thing to do. Making sure you want to set the tone for the rest of this particular drive. So second, and we'll call it six for the Dragons. Ball's on the 24-yard line. Connor Grant under center. Hands off to Esther. Esther's had a little seam. It closed up in a hurry. He got the first down over the 30 to the 31-yard line. Back uh, brought down by Ben Line and company. Corey Esther just has that burst of speed. He, he can turn the corner and he just turns that jet on. He comes in motion again. Dom Giovanazzo on the carry. Got about three. Number 51. Cody Roop on the tackle for Oxford. That'll bring second and seven from the 35. Just underway here in the third quarter. Oxford leads 14 to seven. Lee in motion gets a toss. Coming around the left side. He's got a seam. And run out of bounds at midfield. Corey Esther su sustained his block and just got him that last last couple yards into Oxford territory. I tell you what, hey, Chris has run the ball five times now in this game, and I, I you know, I, I said earlier he's he's put on some 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 more bulk this year. I I would not want to get in his way. I'll tell you that. He's another one that he just has that extra speed when he gets around the corner. First and ten. Matt Krause on the draw, breaks a tackle, gets over the 45, down to about the 43. Brought down by Ben Line, number 65, Thomas Churchill the third. We, we talked at the, at the outset about some of the keys of the game and establishing that speed. Well, you know, Lake Orion really hasn't had a chance to because they haven't had the football, you know, and so Absolutely. Right, that's what they're, they're starting to establish here in this particular series in the first third quarter. Corey Esther with the ball, trying to go up the middle, and there's just nothing there. Number seven. Gain of one. Number 17, Corey Esther, the ball carrier. Players on the comes off, Esther, and still for one play. I think Matt Krause he lost his helmet, and he's, he's got to come out for one play. So Dom Giovanazzo comes in. Kind of a bunch formation for the Dragons. Everyone in tight. Connor Grant back to throw. He's got a man open. He's got another man open. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. Number six, Ryan Wood. What a pass. That was the number five, Zach Arnold. I'm sorry. The five looked like a six. What a pass, and Zach Arnold got great separation. Yeah, he was the backside post. You, you, you commented. That number one, Zach Green, was open too. And he was on the corner route to this side. And, and Connor got his feet set and he, he saw the backside post and uh, threw a beautiful football. And Lake Orange back in this football game. Bevel Aqua on for the point after Kyle Bell's the holder. And he snuck it over the crossbar. How far was that touchdown? Did you notice? I think it was 40 yards. 48 yards? 40. 40? Okay. So, with 9.51 left in the third, we're tied at 14. 
We'll remind you again that DVD copies can be purchased by calling ONTV at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. DVD copies at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060. We covered our upcoming broadcast schedule. I'll also remind you, ONTV will also be covering Varsity Swimming on September 12th against Clarkston, and again on October 10th when Birmingham Seaholm comes to Lake Orion. Brad Shanzer kicking off for the Dragons. Tilly deep. Little pooch kick. Number 27, Scott Strudenbach, looked like he was going to come up and take it and just let it hit and go out of bounds. So Oxford will take over. We're getting everything set right now. Oxford takes over, first and ten from the 35-yard line. Wallington leads them on. You know, the weather report said we may get rain later tonight. High formation in the backfield. Line with the ball. Breaks a couple tackles. Gets close to a first down. That was just hard running by Ben Lyon. Yeah, nose tackle. Trenton Elkins had an opportunity to get Lyon in the backfield. Took a nice angle, had him, had his arms around him, and Lyon is just so strong and, and uh, was able to run through those, that tackle and, and get nearly uh, what, a yard short of the first. Good penetration by Elkins. Second and one for the Wildcats. Tilly split wide to the right. Lines the tailback. He gets a carry. He's got the first down and not much more. Connor Grant met him just over the point of attack and held him up. But it's enough for the first down. That's your quarterback and just threw a 40-yard touchdown pass at your, your inside linebacker made a heck of a tackle. And guess who snapped on the extra point? <laughs> So first and ten for the Wildcats. I just saw a flash up, oh, and referee Pete Utsma saw it too. So we will go. Let's see what they're gonna do. Yeah, they're gonna call both teams off the field. They have to wait 30 minutes. So the Dragons will go up to their locker room. Yeah, they'll do a 30 minute delay for weather. So if the players take a 30 minute weather delay, we'll take a 30 minute weather delay too. We will be right back after the delay. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Well, Kyle Bell, number 13. 
First down, Wildcat. Ball spot the Dragons, 42 yard line.
Number 42, Benjamin Ryan runs the ball. Making the tackle, number 94.
Number 42, back to the line, carries the ball. Second hand by number 67, Justin Taylor.
Number 27, Scott Stupid Rock in the return. You have to fall first and 10 at their own 30 yard line. Come on. 
make a ring.
42. That's Ryan Walker. Making the tackle number three. This is the high number nine, Bradley Dizzy.